there are some some things you do need to know from units one and two some of these things are the general guide to answering questions i'm gonna cover it right now don't worry but there is a specific way that Vika wants you to answer questions, especially theory questions. We are going to cover Newton's three laws, or that's something that you should know from year 11, if not earlier. We're going to talk about constant acceleration formulas, how to do vector addition, momentum and impulse, the concept of work, gravitational spring and kinetic energy as well. And keep in mind, there might be memes <laughs> in this uh, slide deck. So, yeah, uh, this is essentially referring to Newton's third law, but we're going to cover that. We're going to cover that shortly. So let's uh, let's review a bit how we answer questions in physics. You always write the formula you're using as it is, right? So in the physics exam at the end of this year, you're going to get a formula sheet, right? And this formula sh sheet will contain formulas that Vika has provided to you to answer some of the questions. I would highly recommend you just take those, take the formula from the formula sheet and just uh, copy paste it onto your exam and then sub in the values because this can be a two mark question right so the working out here can be worth two marks one mark for the correct substitution and using the right formula and the second mark for getting the right answer the reason they do that is because some students might be using the right formula and do the correct substitution but they might might get the incorrect answer because uh, they've done something wrong with the calculator or their calculator messed up. That's why it's really, really, really important for you to do the correct substitution, if that makes any sense. It's really important to use the exact formula that Vika has given you, because what will happen is that the examiners will have a solution sheet right next to them, and the solution sheet shows this exact formula, and then the substituted values. So they can compare and contrast, and they can mark your paper, if that makes any sense. But if you use the derived formula, uh, examiners don't have enough time to double check how you derive the formula, if it is a correct derivation. It's just a waste of time from their perspective, so if you're using a derived formula, you will not get any marks, unless your final answer is correct, right? So the whole point, what I'm trying to say is, the whole point of using these formulas is to... It's to make yourself feel a bit more secure because it allows you to gain partial marks, right? So it's pretty cool. Now, that is in regards to mathematical questions right uh, but some questions might be a bit more on the theory end they might be a bit more theoretical and how do we deal with those right in order to answer theory questions you do really need to tackle three main points you need to explain the theory related to the question you need to put the theory in context and you need to make a final statement. For example, uh, you guys haven't covered field yet. Uh, you haven't covered field yet, but the topic of fields is something we will actually cover very soon together. It's something that you will go, uh, you will just dive deeper into it during during the year uh but what we're going to be talking about now it's kind of an example of you might what you might expect to see on the final exam actually the question that you see here both of these uh, are related to past week exam 
both of them are related to a past VK exam. So, on the figure on the top right hand side, you are going to see a magnet with the northern pole and the south pole and a loop. So, explain the question is as follows. Explain why an electromagnetic force is generated in the wire loop as the magnet approaches the loop. Again, explain why an EMF or electromagnetic force is generated in the wire loop as the magnet approaches the loop. So explain why there is a voltage. That's what EMF is. And the answer will contain three main points. As we said, you need to explain the theory related to the question first. That is, Faraday's law states that if there is a change in magnetic flux, EMF or voltage will be generated as the equation of the equation of voltage is negative n multiplied by change in flux over change in time, which is essentially a derivative of a flux time graph multiplied by the number of coils in a particular the number of loops in a particular coil. If you feel confused about what I'm talking about, um, don't worry. <laughs> You're going to learn this throughout the year, so it's going to be all good. This is just to pu put in, uh, this is just an example of how to answer theory questions, right? So don't, don't stress out too much. It, it was taken from a VK exam. So yeah, should be a good enough of an example. Now, the second point is that you need to put the theory into context. For example, as flux is equal to B multiplied by A, where B is the magnetic field strength and A is the area of the loop, if the magnetic field strength changes, the flux will also change. And now you make the final statement. Hence, as the magnet gets closer to the loop, the magnetic field strength increases, changing the flux and generating an electromagnetic force. So that's the first thing that I wanted to cover, how to answer questions correctly, right? Uh, there is a VCE is essentially like a game. You need to play by the rules of the game to win, right? Or you need to know the rules of the game and try and use them to your advantage so you can win. A lot of my students have done very well. I would say a lot of them have done very well. I've had students get above a 40 or a 45. It's just because there are a lot of tips and strategies that I personally help them with because obviously I went through the system and I played the games. I played the game according to what I thought was the best way to play it. And I essentially give the same strategies to my students. Obviously, this is not all right. Like, I could go on for like a couple of hours, if not more, when it comes to strategies. Uh...